Hello everyone, welcome to your chapter seven packet or lecture packet. I've comboed two sections into one packet. So this homework here is dealing with seven, oh, excuse me, section 7.1. And this homework here is coming out of section 7.2. They both involve systems of equations but you'll hear me refer to the problems in section 7.1 as two by twos, and the systems of equations in section 7.2 as three by threes. And I'll talk a little bit more, just once I get down here, about what I mean by when I say two by two versus three by three. And at some point in your math careers, you've solved systems that are of the two by two nature. So when I say two by two, I mean two variables and two equations to go with it. We're going to bump and head into new things or potentially new things when we talk about three variables accompanied by three equations. So we're going to solve these systems by substitution. We'll solve them by elimination. We will identify a consistent, inconsistent, or dependent system. We'll solve some applied problems using either elimination or substitution. And anytime you hear that word or that phrase applied problems, that's code for we're going to solve word problems. And then officially we'll pick up three solving systems of three equations. And this, this specific learning outcome is section 7.2. What do you do when you have three variables and three equations? We're still going to use substitution or elimination, but it becomes that much more convoluted when you keep bumping up one digit at a time. Because you can extend this, you can go to four by fours, five by fives, six by sixes. One time in grad school I had an eight by eight. Um, that was a pleasant day. Um, for the most part, not for the most part, for every part, we will stick either in two by two land or three by three land in Math 31. All right, so for linear systems and their solutions, a system of linear equations, also called a linear system, consists of two or more linear equations with the same variables. So when I say that phrase, two by two, all right, that means we have two variables and two equations that go with it. And those are the types of problems that you'll see in section 7.1. And those are also the problems that I, I assume are familiar to you. You might not remember them right now, but you've seen them at some point in your math careers. So three by threes are when you have problems that have three variables and three equations that accompany it. All right, and you need this one-to-one -one relationship if you want to solve a system. All right, so if you have two variables, you need two equations. If you have three variables, you need three equations. When it's not a one-to-one -one ratio like this, stuff gets a little funkier. All right, the solution of a, of a system of linear equations is an ordered pair that makes both of the equations true at the same time. Now, this definition is unique to the two-by-twos. All right, so if I had a two by two system, you would give me an ordered pair and it would have to, that ordered pair would have to plug into both equations and hold on equality. Now, when we get to the three by three systems and I ask you for a solution, you won't owe me an ordered pair, you'll owe me an ordered triple and that would make all three equations true at the same time. All right, so you'll either be giving me an ordered pair or an ordered triple, just depending on what kind of system you have, a two by two, or a three by three. So let me move this up and we're gonna take a look at this, these two systems and I'm gonna solve them using substitution. Now this is by no means the only way to do this problem. With both of these, there are multiple ways of solving these systems. So when you see me write out my solutions right now and, and maybe you were thinking of trying it a different way, it's quite possible we're both correct. So I don't want you to see, see the work I do here and think that's the only way to solve this system. There are quite a few ways to solve this system and I'm just gonna unpack one of those ways. All right, so let me move that up just a slight hair more. Here we go, all right. So when you wanna solve a system by substitution and you, you can see here I have two equations and I have two variables, right? They both have X and they both have Y. Here's, here's the overview, you take Pick one of your equations and then solve for one of the variables in it. So I could solve this top equation for x or I could solve this top equation for y. I could solve this bottom equation for x or I could solve the bottom equation for y. 
So right out the gate, you have four possibilities for how to attack this problem. And then on top of it, you could also have used elimination with this, but, but go with me. So if you're gonna use substitution, pick an equation and pick a variable and solve for it. Now, you'll hear me refer to the path of least resistance, and here's what I mean. When I look at the coefficients in front of all four variable terms, I have a one, a negative six, a two, and a negative seven. I look for the variable that has the smallest coefficient, or I should say the coefficient closest to one, and right now it's x. All right, since there's a one in front of this, that's going to be the easiest variable to solve for. If this had been something like a three, and I know it isn't, but if it had been, I probably would have solved this equation for x, because solving uh, this equation for x would only require to be dividing by two. All right, but I don't have to do that. I can solve this equation for x here, and things are a lot nicer. So I'm just gonna move the six y over, and I get x is equal to six y minus 18. So if I add 6y to both sides of this equation, that allows me to solve for x. All right. And then once you've solved one of your equations for one of your variables, take that variable and then that equivalent expression and substitute it in to the equation you did not pick. So I picked equation one to solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this x expression, 6y minus 18, and I will substitute it into the equation I didn't select, namely the second equation, I will sub it in for x. So take this expression and sub into other equation. All right, so when I do that, instead of writing 2x minus 7y is equal to 16, I will write two times, and this will be 6y minus 18, so 2x minus 7y is equal to negative 16. All right, and we call it substitution for just that. I'm taking the equivalent expression for x and I'm substituting it into this x variable. And now you can see I've created an equation that only has one variable in it. So I've reduced it to really a one by one. One variable, one equation, and we can definitely solve it. So I'm gonna move this up just a little bit more so that we have enough space here. All right, so as I go to solve this, I'm gonna distribute. I've got what, 12y minus 36 minus 7y is equal to negative 16. Let's see, 12 minus seven is five. So I have five y. If I add the 36 over, I'm gonna be at 20. And when I divide by five, I will get y is equal to four, right? And we tend to be super pumped. We're like, sweet, we got a, we got a variable, right? We got our solution, not quite. Keep in mind, if you're solving a system of equations, a two by two, right? This is specifically, we'll mark it here, this is a two by two. Getting y is not enough. You owe, you owe me an ordered pair. I still need to know what x is. So let's now sub this back into our second equation, the one that we actually solved, where we actually solved for x. So this now says x is equal to six y minus 18. Well, in that case, x would be equal to six times four, because remember y was four, minus 18, so we have 24 minus 18, which is six. So that actually gives me my ordered pair. I have the ordered pair, six comma four, right? So I'm feeling pretty good about that. There's my solution. Now, it's always a good idea to check this in your original equation. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've made small little typos, and I catch myself when I, when I check for it. Now I'm gonna use my um, store function on my calculator. Uh, if you don't remember where the store function is, I'm just gonna punch, show it to you. It's this STO right above the on key. If you'll look, there's a little arrow forming to the right. So you'll see that arrow pop up. So if six was my X value, I'm gonna hit six, and then I'm gonna hit the STO button. So I'll hit store, and I will store that in for X. And I would also like to store four in for y. Now y, I do have a y, you gotta look for it. It's kind of hidden. Y, all the, the alphabet letters are in green and you can see y hanging out over the one button. But if I wanna activate the y, I'm gonna have to hit the green alpha key first. So I'm gonna hit this alpha button. And when you do, you can see my calculator shows the A to show that alpha's on. So I'm gonna store four in for y. And then let's just try these expressions. I'll take a look at x minus 6y. 
All right, is that equal to negative 18? Great, it should be. What about 2x minus 7y? I'm gonna hope this is equal to negative 16, it is. So I'm good to go. And if you don't wanna use your calculator store function, you're more than welcome to just plug this in. If I plug six in for x, that's six. If I plug four in for y, that's six times four, which is 24. And sure enough, six minus 24 is negative 18. Again, if I plug six in for x, two x is 12. If I plug four in for y, seven y is 28, and 12 minus 28 is negative 16. So I can check it that way. I always prefer doing it with my calculator only because I'm lazy. And once I, you become familiar with that store function on your calculator, you can kind of buzz through that checking of your solution pretty quickly. All right, let's try this one. Now over here, I get a little bit stuck, and here's what I mean. What I would need to do initially is solve one of these equations for their variables. So I need to solve this equation for x, this equation for y, this equation for x or this equation for y. And when I look at the coefficients, none of them are one, which is, that's a bummer, but what are you gonna do? So I'm gonna take this negative two x and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna solve for x on this equation, only because negative two is the smaller or smallest of these four numbers. Again, this is by no means the way that you have to do it. You could solve the, this equation for x, this one for y, this one for y, and I'm opting this one for x. So like I said, as we go through this process, most of you will pick a different path than I did, and we can both still be correct. Because no matter which path we picked in part A, we should have all wound up at 6, 4. And no matter which path we pick for part B, we should all wind up at the same ordered pair. So let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna solve this for x. So when I do this, I'm looking at negative 2x, will be equal to negative three y minus five. When I divide both sides by negative two, I'm gonna get x is equal to three halves y plus five halves. Okay, so there's gonna be my substitution. Now I, I solved the second equation this time out for x. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna drop that in right here, right? I'm going to sub into the other equation. All right, so here again, I, d I opted to solve for x. Maybe I should have solved for y just to show you that it was an option, but I picked x. Okay, so let's see what we have here. I'm gonna go eight, and instead of x, I'm gonna write this binomial. So I have three halves y plus five halves plus a five y is equal to negative three. Let me distribute this eight. Eight times three is 24. 24 divided by two is 12. 8 times 5 is 40, 40 divided by 2 is 20. And then we had plus 5y here was equal to negative 3. All right, so if I look at this, I have 17y on the left side. When I move the 20 over, I'm going to have negative 23 on the right side. And let me just do a quick check, make sure I haven't messed up any of my numbers just yet. So we had, oh, I do see a, a typo. Um, maybe you caught it earlier on. I'm just catching it now. And again, I, I'm just as guilty as anybody of making typos. Do you see when I move the 3y over, I change this positive 5 to a negative 5? That's a problem. Okay, so this, you'll have to excuse me, this should have really been negative 5 halves. All right, because when I did positive 5 divided by negative 2, that would have been negative 5 halves. This should have been negative. All right and that would have made this negative. And then when I added the 20 over, it would have been positive 17. Now I cheated a little bit because I have the answer in front of me and I'll show you, well, I, I only know the ordered pair answer. I actually chose an alternate way of doing it um, on, my, on my own little cheat sheet. So I knew when I got a, uh, a 23 over here, I was like, well, oh, something's up. All right, so here we go. I divide both sides by 17 and I'm gonna get y is equal to one. All right, and I'm not done with the problem. I still need to sub back and get x, but we know x is equal, according to this, to three halves times y, which is one, minus five halves. Well, three halves minus five halves is negative two halves, 
which is negative 1. So I can see my ordered pair here at negative 1 comma 1. Let me go ahead and check that. So I'm going to store negative 1 in for x, and I'm going to store positive 1 in for y. So I'll hit the store function. And it's just going to overwrite everything I just did in example 1a. I'll store 1 in for y. And what do we want? 8x plus 5y. And hopefully that's negative 3. Great. And then we want negative 2x plus 3y. And hopefully we're going to get positive 5, which we do. So those are all great things. And that's one of my favorite things about systems of equations. You can definitely check your answer at the end to make sure you got the solution correct. Now, I, I was catching my type over here and I said I kind of cheated myself because I want you to see my little scratch mark here that I work off of when I'm making these videos. I want you to see just a different way of doing the problem. So in this version, I actually chose the second equation and I solved for y. Now the advantage in solving for y here is that when I move the x over, everything becomes positive. Right? And then I'm substituting that expression into the y from the first equation. And when you do it this way, it actually leaves you with fractions the whole way through. Because when I distribute this 5 now, 5 times 2 is 10, 10 over 3 is 10 thirds, right? 5 times 5, 25, 25 over 3, 25 thirds. So in this version, the fractions don't go away, but they did in the one that we just did. And let me, let me show you what I mean. When we were talking about these fractions, when I multiplied by 8, I didn't have any fractions left over. So that was kind of nice in, that, in, in the way we did it um, the first time through. But, but what happens, or not what happens, a different way of solving this then is once I have fractions here, I can multiply everything by the LCD and get rid of those fractions. And you can see me then solving for x, plugging back in, and solving for y. And I still get the same ordered pair. And you should you should always get the same answer, regardless of how you went about doing the problem. So I just want you to see this alternate version where I opted to solve, or initially solve for y on the second equation, whereas the one I just did for you in this problem, I solved for x on the second equation. All right, so we're gonna resolve this same, these same systems. So we already know the answers we're gonna get in example two. But instead of substitution, I'm going to show you elimination. All right, and, and I like both of these methods almost equally. I, I'll tend to use substitution when I have a lead coefficient of 1, and I can sub solve for a variable relatively easily. And on here, because none of these variables are 1, I would probably have opted for elimination. So we'll see what that is in the next example. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.